back. It's just because I'm saying hey to them. And we're going to get into God's word. And I believe he's going to trust. Uh, he's going he's to pour his spirit out on this place today and change lives. And, uh, and we'll be ready to move forward. Let's pray together very quickly. Father God, we're opening your word. Lord, we're going to uh, examine your ways. We want to break free from ourselves today, God, so that we might trust in you, move forward, and have life abundantly, God, and to do the things you've called us to do. And Lord, we're going to go ahead and pray real quickly. If there's somebody in this room that's never surrendered their life to you, to your son, Jesus Christ, that today might be the day of salvation. And we'll celebrate. And Lord, we pray today that if somebody's bound up in some of the chains that I might speak of today, that they'll break free. They'll humble themselves, admit they need you, your ways, and it will happen. We thank you. We praise you. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Real quick, some of the things we always talk about each and every time. Uh, and if you guys don't mind, will y'all shut that back door right there? There you go, just so, so the kids can make noise and it won't bother us, all right? I want to welcome first everybody on Facebook. Thanks for joining us today. If you're watching this after the recording, thanks for joining us whenever uh, you have. Real quick, before I get into my message this morning, because I'm very excited to share what God has laid on my heart, reminder that we're here to help. If, those, uh, if you or someone you know is in need, send us a confidential email right there uh, to our office email and we will get back with you we'll let you know what we can do we'll work our schedules to try to meet you when we can and we'll do what we can all right we're able to do that because the church is incredibly generous and they continue to give to support our ministry during this time there's a few different ways that you might give if you feel led to do that there's always baskets in the back we're not passing them right now because of covid you can drop a tithe or an offering in that basket in the back some other ways you can give if you're new watching this today on Facebook, or if you're new in here today, we want to encourage you to download our church app. It is free. Go to whatever app store you have uh, on your device. Search Refuge Church of NC. Download the app for free. It's your gift. We want you to have it on that, on that home screen. If you'll slide up just a little bit, scroll up a little bit, you'll see a gift tab. You can give to support our ministry right there. You can also text Silver Refuge to 77977. You'll get a link. Follow those prompts. It's really easy to do. Or if all that stuff is like, man, you know what? I don't know how to do any of that. You probably learned how to put a stamp on an envelope. You can do that, and you can send it to P.O. Box 872, and we can take care of you that way too, all right? So there's a lot of different ways uh, that you can support our ministry, and we appreciate every single way that you do. Um, some upcoming events that we have going on. We're continuing to worship at three services, 8.30, 10 o'clock, and 11.30. That is to keep our numbers uh, controllable, so to speak, and to make sure that you feel safe. I know that we have a, a nice crowd in here today, but we're able to separate families and kind of keep a little bit of distance to make you feel safe. You want to wear the mask, that's fine. Uh, 8.30 is a mask service uh, where folks are wearing them throughout the entire service. 10 and 11.30, we encourage it. It's up to you. Just keep our distance. Um, and we're, we're doing Facebook Live at 10.15 now. The reason why we're doing that is because in time we'll drop that third service and we're going to go back to two. We just don't feel like it's in our best interest or your best interest right now to do that. We want to make sure that we have that everybody feels safe. We have plenty of room in all three services for people to come. And because, um, you know, that, that 11.30 crowd, you know, if we take away that, they ain't coming at 8.30. They're coming with y'all right here at 10, and it's going to be packed like sardines in here, and people get scared, and they won't come to church. And that's what we don't want to happen. So we'll keep doing it as long as necessary. We do know that we'll have three services available to you throughout the month of March. So we, we know that right now, and we'll kind of be flexible as we move forward to see what holds there. Kalen, we'll be here tonight for small groups at 6 o'clock. God's doing some good things in that ministry. We encourage you, if you'd like a more intimate setting, to come back for small groups at 6 o'clock. Uh, they'll be doing that. Also, my brother Kalen's going to be preaching on Wednesday night, and I'm excited to see what God has laid on his heart. We encourage you to come and support him. He, he and Ian are both... Uh, Moving very closely, by the way, we're going to talk about this, to their ordination as pastors. They're licensed. They're taking these steps to move forward. We're excited about that. I'm excited to see what God's laid on his heart. While he's sharing this message, I'm going to go back and watch it on Facebook when he's done. Because while he's sharing the message, I'm going to be spending a little bit of time with our youth group at 630, explaining with them some opportunities they have coming up for their summer camp and some different things. So you youth kids be here 630 on Wednesday night. And then uh, next, next Saturday, uh, don't pretend like you don't see it because it's up on the screen. We're going to be cleaning this church, and we want to invite you to come, all right? Church spring cleaning just to kind of, I don't know, knock down some stuff in the closets, get rid of things we haven't used in a while, 
spruce up the place a little bit as it begins to get warmer and more people come back. We want to take care of the church. You're invited to come up here at 10 o'clock. For, listen, we'll have a good time cleaning. I know that, that, that doesn't seem like a sentence that might be possible, but we will because we'll enjoy fellowship together, and you might get a surprise lunch. I'm just saying, all right? So come up, El Patron, <coughs> tacos, cheese dip. All right, so come join us, all right, at 10 o'clock. And then on the 18th, we're having a women's Bible study at 6 o'clock. Um, and uh, there's a sign-up sheet out in the lobby. Uh, for any of you ladies interested, and Miss Connie feeds you there too. We like to eat, so uh, Miss Connie will feed you at that. Uh, and something that's not up there, I want to tell. I, I want to just go ahead and tell you that God works quickly when things are put out, and it's for His glory. Um, I challenged some of the men in our church last week, and we've we've spoken very recently. And we're going to remind some of y'all that have have little little boys, because we always do a lot for the little girls around here. We are having a little boys. Uh, weekend on May, it's going to be May 21st. You can mark your calendars. We're going to do an overnight camp out. It's going to be a great time. We have a lot of fun. We're going to get together. It's going to be local. You ain't got to like. We're going to have it in Pigeon Forge. Drive across the mountain. No, we're going to do it local, uh, so it's very convenient to you. I'll get into that later. But thank you, men of the church, for rising up and accepting that challenge, and we're excited about that. Our challenge this year as a church is to walk by faith, not look at all the things we see going around us in the world. All right, and to trust God that he's going to do great things in us, through us, and through this church. And one of the things we're challenging you to do and pray about, certainly if you've not done it already, is to help us in building up our building fund. It's a separate fund than our general ministry, and when that time comes, because it will. Church, we believe this, that God is going to bust down these walls when COVID gets out of here. And we're going to be right back to our standing room crowds, and we're going to be having all these chairs here, and we're going to need more space and more room and figure out how to do things here. We want to have, listen, every bit of money that we uh, are able to collect in our building fund will go towards upgrading our facilities. And our challenge to you is simply a $5 a week challenge, if you could take it. And you can set, the best way to set it up is through our church app. You can Set up a recurring gift every week, whatever day is most convenient for you to have that $5 donated to our building fund. Make sure that you put it, you scroll down here and you put it in our building fund because the default tab is our general ministry uh, or, or general offering. We want to make sure that if you're going to designate it for building fund, you designate it for building fund. There are also some envelopes. If when you're here you'd like to give a gift, you can do that as well. And we believe God's going to do some really good things through that. Now, I'm ready to preach and I, I'm praying that you will have open hearts today. I'm praying you're going to really allow God to speak to you and seek, and seek his way. And uh, the last several weeks, I've been talking about reconnecting and staying connected to God. And I talked about using that connection to reach others. And it was kind of an unofficial sermon series. Three weeks I talked about this idea of connection. And I've shared with you very openly and very honestly that God has really done a, a new work in me. He has revived me. He has encouraged me. Re he's renewed my strength. Uh, he has done some things in recent weeks to help me break free of some things that I've had going on in my own life to better pursue Him. So I'm starting a series today called Breaking Free. And I'm going to encourage you today to really seek God and listen to Him. And, and we're going to get into some stuff here in a little bit. And if we're going to break free from the enemy, make no mistake, we have to do this. We can't take it lying down. If we're going to break free from the enemy and follow God, here's our title slide for today. you got to fight for it. you got to fight for it because he's coming after you. And you got to do some difficult things. And you may have to have some difficult conversations. And you may have to change the way you've been doing things if you really want to do things the way that God desires us to do things. And I want to go ahead and say this before I start because I might forget and it might interrupt me. Uh, I want you to pray for me today because this is the second week in a row. And I'm like, really, God? Really? The second week in a row at about 6.30 a.m. on a Sunday morning after I am prepared and ready to go and got it ready. I mean, y'all, I'm ready. God's like, I, I got something else. So I'm like, Seriously? So, so I have to chicken scratch on my notes I already got, and i got to remember uh, what I need to say and when I need to say it, and God laid something on my heart. So I'm going to move quickly through some of this at the beginning to allow myself some time to hone in on an area that I believe some folks really need to hear today um, and that God laid on my heart. My wife and I were speaking of this morning, um, and, and, and I'll give you a little bit more details when we get there. I'll give you something to look forward to, all right? 
So I, I want to talk about this idea of fighting for it and, and this, this walk of faith that we're in. I know I'm not the only one. Uh, I know that you're with me. And by the way, we're all in this together. Have you ever noticed sometimes that living your life for Jesus is just really hard? It's really tough to follow him. And you've asked yourself these questions, because I have too. I've questioned God, and I'm like, hey, why isn't this walk a little easier? Why can't it be a little easier? Why can't my marriage be effortless? I mean, come on, I've already committed my life to her. Now I've got to work at it? Huh? I've already committed my life to this knucklehead. You mean I've got to work at it? Why can't, hey, why can't raising kids be a little easier? I mean, I'm older than them. Uh, they'll listen. Why are they so hard-headed? Why do they think they know what's right? Why is it so hard to do what's right for my family sometimes? To do things God's way. Why is it so complicated? Shouldn't these things just come naturally? What comes naturally is our flesh and our desires. And what we must seek and fight for is God's Holy Spirit to lead us. He's there. We've got to put ourselves aside and fight to follow Him and trust in Him. We're going to be all over the Bible today. So I encourage you, if you're going to turn to one passage to follow us today, if you have your Bibles, Ephesians 6 is our primary passage at the very end today. We're going to be Old Testament and New Testament all over God's Word. So if you really like to try to challenge yourself and be like, I know where that's at. Flip in there while I'm going. That's good. Go ahead. It's going to be on the screen in case you need to see it. Um, and, and, and we're going to talk about fighting for the things that God wants us to really have. None of the things are really easy. We've got to fight for it. And I want to give you an analogy, and I thought about this, and I was thinking about this, like, um, picture, picture me and a couple of buddies, or me and a buddy going out, or, or you and a buddy, or whatever it is, going out to a football field, and we've all seen a football field, probably, because we're from the South, so we all know what I'm talking about here, and uh, Roll Tide, and um, 100 yard field, you get out on the field, right, and you get out there with a buddy of yours, and it's like, hey man, we're going to put the ball at the 50 yard line, I'm going to drop back, I'll be quarterback, you be receiver, I want you to go five yards, slant to the middle of the field, I'm going to hit you bro, and I want you to go for a touchdown. So drop back, boom, hit him right across the middle, gets the ball, you're running free, baby, you're running free. Man, you get that speed, those burners just going, you get in the end zone, man, you, you run in there, all right, you spike the ball, you do your little TD dance, I'm going to spare you that today. Um, you do, your, yeah, thank you. Um, and, and in your mind, like, everything's great, right? Woo! It's awesome. Now let's change it up, because that ain't life. That ain't life. Let's change it up. Let's first, before we do anything, let's add 100,000 screaming fans just to kind of distract us from being focused on what we really need to do. So let's add 100,000 screaming fans, and let's do this. Let's, give, let's add nine more players to our team to make it even more complicated than just me and the one friend. Let's, let's give nine other people some responsibilities to do as well and have to rely and count on them. And on the other side of the ball, let's put 11 dudes. Mean, nasty, strong dudes. Think this, if you watch the Super Bowl, let's think about the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and their defense. Oh, they were bad, y'all. Now they're on the other side of the ball. Now, hey, same plan, same plan. I'm going to say hike. You go five yards, do a slant. I'm going to hit you across the middle. Just run. Go to the end zone. It's all good. All right? Now, how's that going to look? You're going to be lucky to get past the line of scrimmage. You're going to be lucky to even run that route. All right? Yeah, probably be lucky not to have any broken bones. Forget about reaching the end zone. You just want to survive for the next play. That's just truth. See, there's an opponent on the other side of the ball now, and that opponent has got bad intentions. That opponent has bad intentions for your life. And that's the way that it works on a football field, and that's the way that it works in real life. We have an opponent as well. And make no mistake, you are in a fight. You're in a fight. Whether you like it or not, so listen, you got to fight for what God wants for your life. you got to do it, or the enemy's going to have his way with you. And he's going to do everything he can to try to keep you from fighting, to wear you down, 
to get your eyes on something else, to discourage you, to distract you, to make you believe you got it figured out, to make you believe your way is better. Don't, don't trust God. Don't do things His way. That's the way life is. And you're getting stared down by your enemy. And listen, on a football field, your opponent's got one job. Knock the snot out of them and tackle them really hard. In life, your opponent, his mission statement can be summed up best in three words. Steal, kill, and destroy. That ain't me just saying that. That's right out of God's word. That's what he wants to do to you. The enemy wants to steal and kill and destroy. And not only that, he's hunting you out. He is seeking you out, trying to do this to you. And you're going to, listen, we're going to start this series off today by getting this idea in your head and in your heart that if you're going to reach your goal, if you're going to reach the end zone, if you're going to have the life that God wants you to have, you're going to have to fight for it. And so I want to talk about first today, I, I, again, this is going to be a challenge, it's going to be an encouragement. I want to talk first about three mistakes that we make. Then I'm going to talk about some things that we can do or that we need to fight for. And then I'm going to talk about how to fight for them. And I believe that if you, will, if you will open your heart today and you will open your mind and you'll be willing to change the way that you've been doing things and really fight the way that God wants us to fight and do things the way he has called us to do things, it will change your perspective. And then you're going to have to make the decision. All right, I'm going to fight for this or I'm just going to keep doing the way I've been doing it. So church, be ready. Facebook land, get ready. It's going to be a challenge. I want to encourage you today. I don't want to condemn. I do not want to look down upon. I want to tell you some things that we all might struggle in first. And I want to talk about number one is this. I want to talk about why we can't break free. Why we can't break free. These are things that keep us from breaking free of the enemy. And once we examine these, I'm going to finish off by telling you, point blank, the things that we must fight for, and most importantly, how to fight for them in a way where we can actually experience victory. Not where it's like, eh, another day. Mm. No, I want victory. And so let's start off, shall we, by admitting some of our mistakes. These are things we've all done, this guy included. These are some things that we do, some, th some mistakes that we make in our spiritual life that keep us from experiencing all that God desires for our life. And we're going to look at some scripture along the way to back these up. And again, I'm going to move quickly, and I'm going I'm I'm to camp my tent. I'm going I'm to pitch my tent in a certain area in a little while that I didn't really plan on pitching my tent in in a little bit. But God laid it on my heart this morning to share it with you because when it came to this particular thing I'm going to talk about, it's the greatest struggle that I see today. So have an open heart, have an open mind. And if you think it don't apply to you, remember this. It will apply to someone in your life because you've got kids or grandkids, friends, family, someone that God is going to put in your path that you can share this with. Because see, my responsibility as a pastor is simply to do this, to equip you to do the ministry that God's called you to do. To equip you, whether that whether that equipping needs to take place right now so when you walk out these doors you can do it, or whether that equipping is for later on, we don't know, but we're going to trust God. So here are some mistakes that we all make when it comes to trying to break free and why we can't break free. Letter A under this is here. We taunt the enemy. We think that we can look Satan right in the eye and be like, no, 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 I got this. Now, I'm going to tell you something about me that I wouldn't do, and I don't think any of y'all would do it either. Let's go back to that football field analogy for a second. I would not line up ready to run my five-yard slant and look at that Tampa Bay defense and start talking smack. I wouldn't do that. I think that's very unwise. I, I don't, I'm not going to taunt them anymore, right? I'm not going to do anything. I'm not, I'm not going to taunt. And here's what, here's what we do. We think we're big and strong. We think we're smart enough. We think we've got things figured out. We think we know what we're doing. We've been around the block a few times. This is the way it is. And so we don't worry too much about what I like to call, and I like to say this, and y'all have heard me say it before, we don't worry too much about flirting with the enemy because we're pretty good at flirting. And we get as close as we can to some of the things that we know we shouldn't do. 
We do that. And we underestimate our enemy. And we underestimate the weakness of our own flesh. And so we taunt the enemy. And, 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 and we do this even though the Bible says this of our enemy. Pretty familiar passage. Pretty familiar verse. 1 Peter 5, 8. This is what the Bible says. This is who we face. Stay alert. I want you to remember those two words. It's crazy how we're going to come full circle. Stay alert. Watch out for the great enemy. Your great enemy, the devil. He prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. He's out there. We taunt. We flirt. We think we can get close to him and it won't hurt us. Like, hey, you know what? Like, like I, can, I can go on this website. It'll be all right. I won't fall prey to that. I can spend my money this way. It's okay. It'll work out. I can, I can take, and again, listen, hear my heart on this because this is a weakness for some of you. For some of you, you can handle this. I can take one more drink. It won't, it won't hurt me. And I'm going to come back to that in just a minute. Nothing wrong with an adult beverage if you can be responsible. Problem is, a lot of people can't. So we taunt the enemy is our first mistake that we make. Secondly is this. Not only do we talk, we rationalize our sin. We, we love to make up excuses for why we do what we do. I want you to listen, and here's, because here's the thing. Hey, I love Jesus. I am his son, I'm his daughter, and, and I know that Jesus forgives me. So, although I know I shouldn't do it, I'm going to do it one more time. Because my God is so awesome, he'll forgive me. He'll forgive me. And you know what? You're right. He'll forgive you. But, that, but he doesn't want you to rationalize your sin and doing things that you know are against his ways. I mean, my daughters, my daughters can do whatever they, well, hear, hear me, let me finish this statement, okay? No matter, no matter what they do, I'll forgive them. They belong to me. But you know what? At some point, at some point, and I will say this, and I have said this, when they, when they make the same mistakes over and over again, and they come and they go, Dad, and they look at me, oh, y'all, it melts my heart. Them big blue eyes, they look at their daddy, tears welling up, bottom lip trembling. I'm, daddy, I'm so sorry. I'm like, I'm tired of you being sorry. I want you to obey. You heard me. Do it. All right, now, so anyway, it's so like, that's hard. But that's what they need to hear. And I think God might be saying to some of y'all today, listen, I, I understand you're sorry, but let's, let's start obeying. Let's start doing what I've called you to do. And this mindset, this is what, in the book of Romans, we see it in chapter 6, beginning in verse 1. Listen, should we keep on sinning so that God can show us more and more of his wonderful grace? Like, that makes sense, right? We love God's grace. Why not just sin all the time so he can just pour it out on us? That's what we might think. We rationalize that. Paul says, of course not. Since we've died to sin, how can we continue to live in it? Now, see if any of these speak to you when it comes to rationalizing your sin. I mean, seriously, now, listen. A lot of us will, again, hey, this might poke and prod a little, and we need that sometimes. Because I've been down this road with every one of these. A lot of us will justify our sin based on how clean or how good the rest of our life is. Hey, this is my one vice. This is my one vice. It's all good. Everything else I do is, I'm holy and righteous. You know what the Bible says about that? There's a, there's a problem with that. The Bible says our righteousness is as filthy rags. So we can't use that as an excuse. Like, this is my one vice. This is my one thing. Some of y'all justify your sin. This guy has justified his sin from time to time as this. Hey, it's my business. It's nobody else's. It's my business. It's not hurting anyone else. It's my business. 
A lot of people might try to kind of write their own rules when it comes to their sin. Like, hey, look, I can, I can flirt with it and I can look at things and maybe I, maybe I struggle with lust a little bit. It's okay to look at the menu as long as I don't order what's on it. So we click on that link. We scroll through. We do some things that we know we shouldn't be doing. And then here's another one here. This happens a lot. I hear this and I see this sometimes. We like to blame others. We like to blame others. I, man, I'll tell you something. I hear, I laugh sometimes. I didn't say this at the first service. I, I, I hear a lot of adults today complain about the younger generation that they're coddled. Well, let me tell you something. I see a lot of older people and more mature people that you've been coddled as well. You've been coddled. You keep making mistake after mistake, committing sin after sin, doing these things over and over and over again, and you, and you just, and you're not, listen, and, and you blame other people. You blame Oh, listen to this. Hey, if, if they wouldn't do this, I wouldn't do that. If my wife didn't act that way, I wouldn't do it. Or, hey, the wife might say, hey, well, if he, did, if he wasn't a hardhead and he didn't do that, I wouldn't do this. So we blame other people to justify our sins. Let me remind you, they are not the standard Christ is. Okay? Let me remind you of that. Don't abuse God's grace. Stop rationalizing your sin. And lastly, at least for today, where we fall sometimes, where we fail sometimes, uh, and continue to get bound up in our own sin, all right, we taunt the enemy, we rationalize our sin. Letter C is this. We assume our disobedience won't cost us because we've done it before and we're all right. We think, you know what, I'll just do what I did last time and I'll shake myself free. I'll have that drink. I'll have that drink, and then I'll, I won't do it anymore. I'll do it one more time, and I'll shake myself free. The problem with that mindset, whatever that sin might be, our sin always overtakes us and eventually will overpower us because our flesh is weak. That's not just me, and that's not just you. That's all of us. Our flesh is weak. It'll overtake us. Your sin will find you out. And this is what the Bible tells us, this idea of assuming our disobedience won't cost us. I, I, I referenced this verse a little while ago. The, this is what Scripture tells us, the lack of wisdom in this mindset. Proverbs 26, 11, such a just a short verse, but man, wow, packs a punch. As a dog returns to its vomit, so a fool repeats his foolishness. I might be looking at the Bible going, man, the Bible just called me a dog. Uh-huh. What you going to do about it? Stop doing, stop living in foolishness. Stop being foolish. So, hey, now we look at that and, and I, I, maybe I've touched a nerve on some of the things that you do to justify your sin, to stay bound up in it. We want to break you free today. So, listen, we want to stop settling for less than God's best. So let's do this, Roman numeral two today. Let's pull that up there. Let's fight for what matters. Let's fight for some important stuff in our life. Let's start fighting for the things of God and stop settling for less than his best. Let's do it. Let's don't just settle for being strong in our career. Let's don't just settle for, hey, being good at your hobbies or your interests. Because, see, those things come along no matter what stage we're in. I, I, I have a newfound love for a, a hobby in my life. It is just the most wonderful, frustrating, amazing, most difficult game that God put on this earth called golf. I love it. It's so, like, it's, it's the challenge of it. I'm practicing to become better at it and learn about it, and I enjoy doing it. But it's in its proper place, right? For some of y'all, it might be, I don't know, throw some things out there. Might be the deer stand. Might be uh, online shopping. Some of y'all really good at that. Um, could be, you know, different hobbies, different things we enjoy doing. It's all good, proper place. Stop letting, let, hey, when it comes to our sin, let's stop letting our emotions and our impulses dictate our actions. 
I mean, we all get emotional. We all have impulses and urges to do certain things. But instead of doing that and letting our flesh and our desires dictate what we do, let's start yielding to God's ways and trusting in Him that He's got a better way. Let's don't settle for being strong at things that don't last and weak at things that do. Let's tap into the warrior within us that is the Holy Spirit in us. Trust that God that we can have the strength and fight for what he wants. And I've got three things under here, and I'm really going to hone in and pitch my tent in one area in a minute. But first is this, letter A, I want you to fight for your faith. you fight for your faith. What do you mean? Hey, it's tough. I'm reminded of a story in Scripture, and it's not in my notes or anything, but God brought it to my mind in the first service today. I know we believe. Hey, look, if you didn't believe that Jesus Christ was the Son of God, you would not have ever stepped into that relationship with him or see the salvation that comes only through his blood. But here's what I know. I know that we still struggle believing that his ways are best. I know that we still struggle in trusting him. And I know that you shouldn't beat yourself up, up over that. You should fight for your faith because I know of a story in Scripture of a man who believed as well, and he brought his son who needed to be healed. And he had seen with his own eyes Jesus heal others. And he brought his son up to him and he said, I know if you touch him, you can heal him. I know you can do it. And Jesus said, if you believe. And what followed next out of the man's mouth is some of the most, it's crazy scripture. He goes, I believe. God, help my unbelief. We believe sometimes we don't believe. We have to fight for our faith. This is Paul's word of encouragement to Timothy in 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 12. He says this, fight the good fight for the true faith. Fight it. Don't lay down. Fight. Hold tightly to the eternal life to which God has called you. The important things which you have declared so well before many witnesses. We know. Hey, I know. I look at you. My brothers, my sisters in Christ. We know. We believe. Let's fight for it now. Let's fight for it. And we do that. I spoke to this. We do it by allowing God to continue to shape and mold us. That's called sanctification. To grow us by agreeing with God that his best is what we want. Our best is not good enough. Surrender to him and surrender to his ways. Philippians 2, he speaks to this again. He says, hey, you always follow my instructions when I was with you. Now that I am away, it's even more important. When you're by yourself, it's even more important because you know what the enemy loves? All he loves to get us alone. We're easy prey. We're easy prey. See, it's tough in here. I done cast him out of here today. He, he ain't got no place. God's working on your heart today. All right, Holy Spirit's in this place today. We get alone and we get by ourselves and the enemy starts licking his chops. So it's even more important when you're away. Now, I'll, listen, he says work hard to show the results of your salvation. Let me be clear. He does not say work hard for your salvation. Salvation is the free gift that comes only by the grace of God. Once we receive that salvation, working hard means this. It means the fight to be sanctified, to obey don't just listen. Be obedient. Obey God. There it is. Obeying God with deep reverence and fear. Trusting in Him. Your way's best. For God is working in you, giving you the desire and the power to do what pleases Him. In other words, to fight against your flesh, your thoughts, what you think might be right. And understand that His ways are better. Because they just are. Now here's where I'm going to camp out, so get ready. Not only do we got to fight for our faith, we got to fight for our family. Some of y'all in here right now, listen, I know, I'm single. Okay, well, I would bet that you still have family. And I would bet that if you are, your heart's desire is probably to have a family one day. So this applies to everybody. And here's what I know when it comes to fighting for our family, particularly for the men. I've never met one man I've never met a man that when it comes to fighting for, like, hey, I know, I, I know how we're wired, dudes. I know it. When you see that, you're like, you dang right, I fight for my family. You touch my kid, you'll be sorry. Uh-huh. Maybe you can flex a little bit on them, whatever. You know, hey, yeah, physically, we'll all do it, right? 
Physically, we will fight for our family. What about spiritually? How often do you hit your knees? How often do you pray for your wife? How often do you pray for your coworkers? How often do you pray for your kids? How often do you, in your spiritual life, how often do, do you pray for your family? Spiritually. What about financially? Are you willing to sacrifice financially for your family? Are you willing to fight for your family when it comes to this? See, this is where God really, like, I, I had very short notes on this today. Very short notes on this part. But God worked on me today, and uh, I've got to share what he laid on my heart this morning. See, I have, I have ministered to very, very, very many married couples. And a lot of them, a lot of married couples, um, they, there, there are certain things they decide to do in their life. And again, I want you to hear my heart on this and I, as, I, as I speak to some truth today. All right? Financially, they decide, you know what we're going to do? What's his is his, what's, my, what's, what's hers is hers. We're going to, we're not going to combine this area of our marriage. It doesn't work for us. It doesn't make sense for us. And that, that happens a lot. It happens a lot. A lot more than you might think. And again, there's no condemnation and there's no judgment for that. What there is, is there's some truth to be told today. And here's, I, I've done a lot of weddings as well. And one of the most beautiful parts of a wedding and, a, and one of the most beautiful parts of a marriage is this, is that you take a man and you take a woman and you take these two people and you bring them together and you create one flesh. And, and Paul, Paul writes about it in the Bible because he was never a married man. He says, it's a great mystery to me. But it's amazing. Come one flesh. Now, I've also, I've never, done a, I've never done a wedding where I've, I've started the vows and I've, I've, I've gotten finished with the vows and everything. And, um, and what's followed next has not been these two words, I do. I'll explain all that and both of them, you know, hey, I'm, maybe one day I'll have to deal with that awkwardness. But both of them have both, have, have always said, I do. Another thing I've never heard out of either one of their mouths, man or woman, is I do, except for my money. Except for my money. I want to I wanna encourage you today, and I want to challenge you today. Hey, and by the way, by the way, by the way, this isn't a Man only thing or a woman only thing. I've, I've, I've heard lots from both sides. Now, I'm going to tell you what I hear most of the time. Most of the time. All right? The man don't want to do it because, oh, I'm going to give some of you, like, some of you ladies might get ready to jump up and down and run around this place, okay? Because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to affirm something you already know. All right? In most situations, the man makes most money because women, y'all don't get paid for the same amount for the same work. Amen. Woo, woo. Raise that roof, ladies. All right. So a lot of times the man is the breadwinner. And so he's like, well, you know what? We'll divide it up equally. Or we'll, 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 I'll, we'll do it fairly. A lot of times, not always, a lot of times the woman will say this. I don't want to do it because he's irresponsible. He don't know how to handle his money. I'd rather him keep his and me keep mine. I hear that a lot. Let me, let me tell you, let me just encourage you spiritually, if you enter into a, because some of y'all are going to get ready to get married one day. I'm going to tell you what you're inviting into your marriage spiritually. You are inviting, not like when you see me do this, it's because I, I got chicken scratching oats right here, and I can't see close up, but I can see you far away like that, okay? So here we go. You are inviting, number one, a lack of trust into your marriage. Number two, it also invites secrecy into your marriage. He spends it his way, she spends it her way. It is, it, it, it often, it, it causes a lack of accountability. And I'm going to tell you what it results in. Every single time I've seen it result in this. No exceptions, zero exceptions, zero exceptions. Every single time it results in bitterness, resentment, and anger. And there's a reason why. See, you may or may not agree with what I'm about to say, but it really don't matter. 
There's a phrase that our United States government figured out in 1954. Separate is never equal. Separate can't be equal. Try to separate it, think think it's going to be all right. Someone will always get the short end of the stick. And it will result in bitterness, resentment, and anger. It goes against spiritually God's idea of one flesh. And again, I want to speak this in truth and in grace today. All right? It also goes against logic. Y'all going in a minute. Somebody's going to like this. I got some math for you today. Y'all ready for this? I got, I got some logic for you right now. I'm going to destroy. And, I, by, and by the way, by the way, listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. If you've got an excuse, I've heard it. If you've got an excuse, I've heard it. All right? This is what I have determined. And let's say, let's say that you have, you have good intentions, your best intentions. Let me throw some stuff up. I, I've, got, I've got the numbers. I tried to simplify this as much as I possibly could when it came to this issue. And, this, and the reason why is because I see more Christian married couples struggle with their money than anything else other than just their spiritual walk. I see that struggle more than anything else. So let me give you this today. It's free. You can thank God because he laid this on my heart today. Let's say your combined weekly income is $1,000 and your combined weekly bills are $800. Pretty that's standard, pretty standard right there. Okay, I'm just throwing these numbers out. And by the way, by the way, you can take any numbers and plug them in any way you want. You'll always get the same result. Okay, because numbers do not lie. So you can plug in any numbers you want, and you'll always get the same result. Weekly income of one thousand dollars. Your weekly bills are eight hundred dollars. So let's just say, for example, that of that weekly income. Next slide, please. Spouse A makes seven hundred dollars a week. Spouse B makes three hundred a week. Quick math, that equals 1,000. So, hey, let's, let's be fair. I'm spouse A. I'm going to be the man. I'll take up that 70%. I'll, I'll take 70% of the burden. Show you what a real man is. You just got to pay 30. Or, hey, if you're the woman, hey, look, baby, you're not real responsible, so I make more than you do, so I'll take care. I'll pay the 70%. You pay the 30%. It'll all work out because that's fair. That's fair. All right, let's, let's, let's dive. Let's dive. I love to dive deep. Let's dive deep. So spouse say, let's assume they're going to do things God's way and tithe. All right? Because we always put God first. So they, they decide to tithe $70 off that $700, and they pay 70% of the bills, which means they've got $560 going towards the bills every week. That means at the end of the week, and by the way, get your calculators out by any means. I just encourage you to check this. Leftover income is 70 bucks. That's what you got to spend. There you go. All right, cool. Spouse B, of that 300, you're going to tie 30. You're only going to pay 30% of the bills, which makes $270. Hmm. Leftover income's 30. Dang. So at the end of the week, spouse A has 70, spouse B has 30, and their conclusion is this, is that separate cannot be equal. Bitterness, anger, resentment. And now, let me, this is good. Let, now look, see, we're using some logic and going, and we're going to excuse this idea of not coming together as one flesh because we're breaking it up and being fair. And we think we're doing it God's way, or we say we're doing it God's way. We're going to tithe off that even. Let me tell you something. Most, most of the time, that's not even the case. So let's, let's say we don't even honor God. Guess what? Let's get this next slide right here. Of special note. <laughs> I added that this morning. When God is not honored and the tithe is not included, the disparity grows. You, you follow that? Now spouse A's got 140. Spouse B only has 60. And that's if God is not honored. Here's what, now listen to me. Let, let me... Let me prod press and poke a little bit. Yeah, but. Yeah, but. Yeah, but. Yeah, but. Confusion, chaos, excuses, blah, 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 blah. I'll give you everything, whatever, right? 
Boy, that gets confusing, doesn't it? Stuff gets confusing. You've got to really think about it. You know what I know about my God? He's a God of clarity. He's a God that wants peace. He's a God that wants calm. He's a God that wants us to come together. Let me show you something real simple. God's way. Take that thousand dollars a week together. You tie the hundred. Spouse A's got fifty dollars left over income. Spouse B's got fifty dollars left over income. You do it together. You get some equality there. And let me add something too. I want. I, I, I'm gonna get real personal. What? What happens? Let me throw a wrench in. Let me throw a wrench in. Cause see, life happens and things get crazy sometimes. What happens when things go well for spouse B and now spouse B gets a big raise at work? And now spouse B takes over where spouse A was. Now they got all the money. Or they're making more. They're the breadwinner. Things like that happen sometimes. The tables turn. Things don't look so rosy now, do they? And here's where I get real personal with you. And I tell you our story. See, in that scenario... When that happens and something good happens for the other person, there's not a lot of joy on this end of it. Dang. Good for you then, I guess. A little envy, a little bitterness, a little anger. We've done a lot of things wrong. Amen, baby? Okay. We, we're not a perfect couple. One of the few things we've done right, like before we were married, was made the decision that we were going to strive to be one flesh in everything that we did, no matter what. And there have been times in my marriage when she has made a lot more money than me. There have been times in our marriage where I have made a lot more money than her. We're at a place now in our marriage, just so happens that we're there now, and it, 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 it might change, could change, probably will. Well, we're pretty much on common ground. We make about the same. Do you know what? When I have had financial favor fall my way in a job opportunity or career or whatever, and I make more money, do you know who my biggest cheerleader is? That woman right there. Do you know what happens when she comes home and she tells me she's going to get a raise? Do you know what I say? You go, girl! Bring home that bacon to daddy. We'll eat it together. I'm her biggest cheerleader. She's my biggest cheerleader because we're in it together. And you know what that requires? Some difficult conversations. Some, hey, some accountability. Some responsibility. But it helps us to fight to stay one flesh. And all along the way, as a side note, as a side note, whether combined our income was, you know, 20 bucks an hour, because maybe at the beginning, or, or you know, there, there's a time when she was making about $12 an hour, and I was working making $8 an hour, and we decided to tithe off that $20 an hour, or whether, whatever, we've honored God every step of the way. And you know what? It's crazy. God has done this. He's increased what he's blessed us with. And now, and I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm not saying this in any sort of self-righteous way. I promise you, I want you to understand my heart on this. Now, we get excited because that means we can honor God even more. And that is truth. That is truth. We've got to fight these things. We've got to, listen, these are obstacles a lot of people face. And the enemy wants to distract and attack and let us come up with excuses and all of these things. And this is like, it's, they're tough times. And, and the people of Israel faced tough times. And the enemy was all around them. And Nehemiah is encouraging them and emboldening God's people as they face these constant threats from their enemies. This is what he says in, in Nehemiah 4.14. He says, look, I looked over the situation and I called together the nobles and the rest of the people, and I said to them, don't be afraid of the enemy. And today, if you need to have that difficult conversation, I want to tell you, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. 
This is what he says. Remember the Lord who is great and glorious and fight for your brothers, your sons, your daughters, your wives, and your homes. Fight, people. Let's fight to do it right. So we've got to fight for our faith. We've got to fight for our family. And lastly is this. We've got to fight for our life. Again, let me remind you of the three words of the enemy. Steal, kill, destroy. Every day it's a battle. You, you, might, you might have some victory today, but you'll have that battle tomorrow. That's why Scripture tells us to take up our cross, die to ourselves, and follow Jesus because he is victorious. I'm reminded of that old hymn we used to sing all the time, Victory in Jesus. He will lead us to victory. We've got to trust in him. And when we fight, because we will fight, if we decide, we get, listen, we got to stop doing it in our own strength, with our own reasoning, making up our own rules, our own excuses, rationalizing things. we got to stop doing that, and we've got to remember this last point today. we got to fight with God's weapons and not our own. We'll fail every time. Finish the scripture today. Familiar, familiar to most of you, but a great reminder in Ephesians chapter 6. We're not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world, and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. Therefore, put on every piece of God's armor so you'll be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. Then after the battle, you will still be standing firm. Stand your ground, putting on the belt of truth and the body armor of God's righteousness. For shoes, put on the peace that comes with the good news so you'll be fully prepared. In addition to all of these, hold up the shield of faith to stop the fiery arrows of the devil. Put on salvation of your helmet as your helmet. And take the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Pray in the Spirit at all times on every occasion. There's those two words following next. Stay alert. And be persistent in your prayers for all believers everywhere. Ephesians 6, 12-18. I wonder today if there's anybody ready to break free. I'm going to tell you something. I'm I, 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 got, I got tired of fighting. I got tired of fighting. I got tired of fighting. You can fight on your own, but you will not win. We've got to use God's weapons. He gives them to us to win this war, to break free from the enemy, and experience life as Jesus came to give us. You got to fight, because I'm going to tell you something about these chains that got you bound up right now. I'm going to tell you something about these chains. You may feel like, man, I, listen, I, I'm dealing with it. I'm dealing with it, man. Everything's good. It's all, it's all good. I'm making it. Keep my head above water. The longer you carry those chains, the more burdensome they get. The heavier they get. The more they will wear you down. And I will promise you this, if you keep carrying those chains, you will become bitter. You will become angry. You will turn your back over and over on God instead of going, I give up, God. I'm going to trust you. I'm going to trust you. I'm going to fight to do this your way because I know that your ways are better. I am ready today to break these chains. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. We're going to sing about it. Father, thank you for this day, this opportunity. Thank you for your word, God. Thank you for, thank you for your word being true to itself and how it is sharper than any two-edged sword. And it is cut to the heart and soul of who we are, Father. I pray today we'll be obedient, God. I pray today we'll, we'll begin to fight, God. Lord, I pray today that we might have these difficult conversations if we need to have them, God. I, I pray today, Lord, that we'll, 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 we'll deal with each other in love and in grace. God, I pray today that you'll have your will in your way. And I pray today, Father, that you will be glorified in all that we do. And I ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Stand up. Come on.